Welcome to Writing Therapeutic Music Experiences to Support Client Goals, one of the course modules offered at musictherapyworks.com under the course umbrella of Composition and Creativity. My name is Mary Jane Landacre and I'm your instructor for this course. And I just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to get some of your continuing music therapy education needs from this site at musictherapyworks.com. Today we are going to spend some time engaged in writing therapeutic music experiences, what I call TMEs, to support client goals. And we're going to go through a bit of a process on how to think about your goals and how to write these, these goals. In addition to our regular learner objective, our overarching learner objective of completing demonstration elements, today, by the end of this 50 minutes module, I hope that you will have two therapeutic music experiences, including music compositions, to support, support specific client goal domains. And these plans will be submitted to me as your instructor as proof that you understand what we're talking about over this next hour. In addition, um, just a little hint, if you complete specific um, elements, you can also turn these songs into CBMT for an additional uh, continuing music therapy education course credit. Besides the one that you get for this particular course, you can turn this into additional credits and we will talk about that at the end of the presentation. If you complete everything that is done in this particular course module, then it will only require one additional element for you to turn this into additional credits, and we will talk about that at the end. So for materials for this course, it's suggested that you have a computer with internet access, that's so you can access the worksheet, and also so you can get the, um, you could send me demonstration elements easily. You're going to need a printer and paper, pen or a pencil, and the worksheet, which is available on the website. Optional materials include staff paper or an accompanying instrument of your choice or music composition software and video capability. And if you're going to be doing um, this additional CMTEs, then you're going to need to have the music composition software and the video capability, so just FYI. So our job as music therapists is to support our client and often we have to support our clients through original therapeutic music experience or TME development. Because quite frankly, there aren't always good matches and resources out there for therapeutic music experiences and clients out there in the world. You know, I've, I've had to write um, toothbrushing songs. I've had to write um, shower songs, you know, the order of taking a shower, the appropriate way to do things. I've had to write songs about covering your coughs and your sneezes because the ones that were out there just didn't really grab my client's attention. And so part of my job was then to support my clients through that development. Because it's my job as the music therapist to engage my clients in therapeutic interaction. And during that, as the music therapist, I need to use music to help frame that experience. And honestly, there are times when the music that's available to you just doesn't work. And so you have to come up with your own. And I think most of us do that because it's kind of fun to come up with your own things. Also, the thing that you want to be thinking about all the way through this is that, that there, is, there are multiple functions of everything that we do. And so you want to get the most out of what you work on. If you're going to compose a song for a specific client to work on a specific task, if you spend a little bit of time and identify what other tasks you're asking your client to do during that, all of a sudden you have a multifunctional therapeutic music experience. And that's very important as we are challenged to come up with brand new things for lots and lots of different clients. This way you can say, all right, I've, I've written this particular 16 measure song that encourages client A to lift her arm above a 60 degree angle and but client B who doesn't need that goal at all but does need some work on on consistent grasp patterns they can they can engage in the exact same therapeutic music experience and I don't have to change what I'm doing to accommodate both client goals I can get both client goals accomplished at the same time because you really want to make sure that you're working smarter and not harder 
So you need to download the TME work worksheet. It is a pretty long um, piece of paper here. And make sure that you've got this available for um, the rest of our discussion. So take a little bit of time to download that worksheet. And while you're doing that, I'm going to do a little ukulele music. learning how to play the ukulele. All right, so this therapeutic music experience resource is one that I've put together over the years, um, loosely based on what we did as um, undergraduates in my undergraduate course program, but also expanded over the years as I've become more used to writing therapeutic music experiences. And basically, if you're thinking through all of the things that are on the worksheet here, you'll have a pretty, pretty firm, pretty put together therapeutic music experience plan when you get it all done. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to start with your client goal because this is writing therapeutic music <laughs> experiences to support client goals. And for this particular therapeutic music experience, if I am starting with a client goal, I want to make sure that that's up at the very top because that's that's what's guiding my composition, that's what's guiding my procedures, that's what's guiding everything. And usually if I'm writing things for a more generic group of people where I might not necessarily know their goals, then I, um, I skip this aspect. But for this, for the intents and purposes of this exercise, start with your client goal. Then you're going to have your purpose. And the purpose is, is the one that I use most often. This is the part where I identify all the goals that are addressed during a specific therapeutic music experience. And so I look at, at my domains, which I, I organize in the following way. Um, motor domains, uh, academic cognitive domain, social communicative, one domain, emotional behavioral, another domain, musical. And I look at all of the, all of the things that my clients are getting from this particular therapeutic music experience because that way I can have clients do with different goal areas working through the same therapeutic music experience and I can justify using that experience because everybody is working towards one of their primary client goals. So this is where I identify those things. So a common purpose statement may include um, upper extremity gross motor range of motion, fine motor grasp and release patterns, hand-eye coordination, entrainment to external stimulus, um, completion of one-step song sequence directives, uh, timbre, you know, recognition, sensory integration. I mean, there may be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of purposes for a specific therapeutic music experience. If you think about those things now, then it makes it a lot easier to identify clients later on who can benefit from this particular therapeutic music experience. Source. If this is an original idea, you want to make sure that you, you put that, that you affix a copyright notice to that, to this therapeutic music experience, because that will help if this is ever questioned. If it's somebody else's idea, then you want to give credit where credit's due. Don't take somebody else's idea. If you're not sure, then I usually put down, you know, traditional game, uh, author, original author, unknown. And so far, so good for me. Nobody's challenged that yet. But you want to identify your sources as much as you can in that place. Materials. Think about all the things that you're going to need to have in order to complete the therapeutic music experience. If you're going to need to have a symbol on a particular music stand, then you need to put that down. So that way you can prepare all of those things before you start the therapeutic music experience and you don't have to stop the music. What kinds of instruments do you need? Do you need any visual aids? Do you need any manipulatives? Do you need electricity to run a stereo? What do you need? Specific song track? Who knows? 
environment. Are there any special environmental requirements to being doing this TME? I have some where clients need to be um, sitting in chairs. I have some where clients need to be spread out around the room with enough space that they don't touch anybody. Do you need specific lighting, temperature, seating formats? All of these things go into environmental considerations because you don't want to do a line dance activity in a room where there is not enough space to line dance. The song, chant, and words, this is where I incorporate whatever music I'm going to use. So if it's an original song or a chant, I will put, I will put a picture or a link to a specific uh, file that has that, that music, that um, information on it. So that way I've got it all right there in my file. The procedure, this is step-by-step -step instructions on what you're going to do when you're leading the therapeutic music experience. And I use a couple of different ways to identify what I'm going to be doing. I use um, reinforcement opportunities. That's one of, of the prompts that I put down in my procedure. So that way I remember to reinforce clients when they need to, when we're engaged. Um, redirection and cue opportunities. What am I going to, what am I going to say or do that will prompt the client to engage? And assessment. What am I looking for at specific stages? And all of this information, as you can see, is discussed on the worksheet. The procedure is really a step-by-step -step for me. It really covers what I'm doing as the therapist rather than what the client response is going to be because I can't always predict what the client response is going to be. I really think of this, proce of this of procedure as a flow chart. And if you're interested in knowing more about that, contact me and I'll send you some of my flow charts. The last section here is the therapeutic function of music. And this is specifically designed to discuss what does the music do to support this particular experience. If the music disappears, would the client still be able to complete the application and reach the desired outcome? And if so, why, why bother doing this in music therapy? If the presence of music is necessary, then you have a good music therapy experience. It may be appropriate, you know, you, you need to be thinking about why, why would you do this in music therapy if the music is, is not an essential part of what is going on. And then the last part of this is the chart. And the chart is a way for me to organize my um, elements of music. So you'll see that there are ooh, 10 different aspects here. Um, I write short descriptions of each one of these aspects. So with the melody, I'll write something along the lines of um, familiar melody, London Bridge is falling down, the pitch is variable based on client needs, rhythm, some syncopation, uh, lively pace and lively rhythm, dynamics, variable, harmony, major modality, form, A, you know, strophic, tempo, variable, timbre, variable based on the instrument, style, children's song, lyrics, um, unfamiliar lyrics to familiar me melody. And basically what this does is it identifies places where I can shape or change the music in order to make it fit my clients a little bit better. Again, if you want more information about that, contact me and I'll send it to you. So the first therapeutic music experience that you're going to write for your demonstration element is uh, based on a fictional client description and a fictional goal. And, um, you know, be creative, do what you want to do with this. There is no wrong answer. You do need to include a simple composition of at least 16 measures long if you want to use this for additional continuing music therapy education credits. So at least 16 measures. Here's the client description. This is a female client with a gross motor upper extremity impairment on her left side. She is unable to use her arm at full range of motion on her left side. Match your own clientele's age range because it really doesn't matter. This kind of diagnosis can happen for kids and adults and young adults and older adults. And so basically match your clientele's age range when you're designing this. Present level of performance, the client can raise her left arm approximately 45 degrees from resting position in all directions, in all planes of motion. So she can um, abduct, 
she can go forward, she can go behind, but only 45 degrees from resting position. Some more details about our client. The client seems very motivated by violins and cymbals for some reason. <laughs> Currently engaged in occupational therapy three times per week, but progress has stalled. This, this The OT can't seem to get this client to go higher than the 45 degrees. The attention to task ranges from approximately 30 to 90 seconds long. So lots of redirections for this particular client. And the client has a history of singing, likes to, to sing and vocalize, and appears to enjoy listening to folk songs from the 1960s. So you have some details here for your client and gives you just kind of an, op an idea of how to start to structure and frame this particular therapeutic music experience. Here is the client's goal. The client will raise her left arm to a measurement of 60 degrees minimum on all planes of mo movement four out of five times. Current baseline is 45 degrees on all planes of movement, five out of five times. So you're wanting to get this client to move that, that, that arm just a little bit higher because we're going to work on, on our objectives. You know, our, our, our end goal is going to be full range of motion established in that upper extremity. But at this point right now, the client can get approximately six or approximately 45 degrees. We want to increase by a small, a small increment to 60 degrees. So you're going to want to identify the focus of the goal statement to assist you in designing your TME. So the next thing that you're going to do, next thing that you're going to do is you're going to use the resource on this worksheet. You are going to fill out all of the pieces, all of the elements that are here, including the client goal, the purpose, remember to think about more things that you're doing, the source, the materials, the environment, the, the song and the procedure, as well as the therapeutic function of music. And you're going to compose a 16 measure minimum song to support the client. This does not have to be a song that has lyrics necessarily, but uh, it needs to have some sort of musical intent and purpose behind it. And while you are doing that, you get about 30 more seconds of ukulele music. If you would like to pause right now, feel free to pause the, the um, presentation as you are working. Take your time. There is no time constraint on this. You have until you get finished. I will play about 30 seconds worth of music and then we'll continue with the presentation. Let's see, going back to the key of D. Ukulele challenges me because everything is named differently. So a D on the ukulele is like an A on the guitar, but it's a D instead. I'm still learning. So the next TME that you're going to do is going to start with a client goal that you have. Go through the same exact process to write another um, therapeutic music experience. Again, 16 measure minimum song to go with the goal and the client that you selected. Hopefully, this will be something that is a little bit easier now that you've gone through the process once. Pause again to complete your TME for this client using the resource. Again, compose a 16 measure minimum song to support the client. And here's your ukulele music. One of my favorite parts of being a music therapist is writing songs, brand new songs for my clients. Now that you've completed your two 
demonstration, your two TMEs for your demonstration elements. There's some things to consider here as you are continuing to do this type of, of work. First of all, the more, more you compose, the more comfortable you become with composition and often with improvisation as well. Take this TME format that I've used here and make it your own. I mean, there is no reason why you have to do what I do. This is just one way for me to organize and for me to be able to uh, get other people to organize as well. If, if you don't really need to do a whole lot with environment, then get rid of it. If there's another element that you think this TME format is missing, let me know because I am always interested in what other people need and use in their own particular clientele. The format, if it doesn't work for you, that's okay. Don't worry about it. And if you want to get more from your TMEs, if you want to understand a little bit more about your, um, you know, like the purpose and how to be really identifying those types of things, consider taking or getting the most from every TME course module offered through our um, website. Okay, so now as promised, we're going to, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how you can change your two TMEs into additional CMTE credits. This comes directly from the CBMT recertification manual in 2015. You can get up to five credits per composition and you can submit up to 20 credits per cycle. So you can get an additional 10 CMTEs from the two TMEs that you've, you've worked on here. Just need to make sure that you do the following things. It needs to be an original music composition. You need to come up with this on your own and it needs to be uh, I, I would think copyright would be a good idea, at least um, affixing a copyright notice to this. You need to have a musical score of the original composition, at least 16 measures in length, see, and correctly notated by hand or by computer software. So you need to make sure that it is in a fixed manner. You also need to set, you also need to have an audio recording of the composition on audio tape or CD. I'm assuming that in the year 2020, when they redo this, that we will no longer have to do audio tape or CD. It'll be like YouTube videos. So I'm, I'm sure that if you have an audio recording on video, you're okay. But just in case, you might want to record it as an MP3 as opposed to a video. You also need to indicate what the composition's therapeutic use will be. And that's one of the reasons for the TME plan, because that's all part of, of the, the thought process here. You need to indicate what client populations this is appropriate for. You need to indicate do therapeutic domains addressed. Purpose. <laughs> you also need to have at least one specific therapeutic objective within the stated domains. And so specifically using that client goal is important. And then you also need to have a procedure for implementing the composition to meet the objectives. Procedure. Uh, so if you, if you take the TMEs that you've written for this course module, it's not going to take a whole lot more for you to have to put it into CBMT for additional credits. Congratulations. One CMTE from me can turn into 11 total. So. What you need to do now is you need to send your completed TME worksheet here to me at contact us at musictherapyworks.com. And I wanted to thank you so much for choosing us for your continuing music therapy education needs. I know that there are, are lots of opportunities and lots of ways for you to get your, your continuing education. And I just appreciate you taking the time to go through this course module. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at the, the email listed here. And thank you again.